I think I have uh, spoken before, I don't know, was it here or to another fraternity, about uh, the encyclical of Pope Francis that has appealed in a special way to Franciscans because of its title and because of what it contains, that is, uh, where he speaks about the care for the earth, our common home, as he calls it. Uh, the encyclical, as you know, is Laudato Si, which means, may you be praised, and it continues, Mere Signore, my Lord, so it's addressed to God. May you be praised, my Lord. And then it's the beginning, as you well know too, of the um, uh, Canticle of the Creatures or the Canticle of the Son composed by Francis of Assisi. And I think when Pope uh, Francis thought about writing on the common home of people, the earth, that St. Francis must have been at the front of his mind. And that's why he chose this title and why in that encyclical he devotes some special space indeed to St. Francis of Assisi. The Pope begins by saying there, <clears throat> in the words of the beautiful canticle, St. Francis of Assisi reminds us that our common home is like a sister with whom we share our life, and a beautiful mother who opens her arms to embrace us. In other words, following St. Francis, Pope Francis personalizes the earth. He calls her a sister, a mother, who sustains us with various fruits, with herbs, and uh, giving us many colored flowers, as St. Francis would say too. However, human beings have done a lot of harm to her. They have abused her, they have treated her irresponsibly, and treated irresponsibly what she has produced. And the reason this has happened is that human beings, some have made an arrogant claim really to be her lords and her masters. That they're entitled, in other words, to use the earth and everything in it just as they please, to plunder her. Now, if we read the beginning of the book of Genesis, we know that God gave a certain control over the earth, especially over living creatures, to um, human beings. He gave dominion over the earth to them. But that was not so that they could just abuse her, but rather that they should use the earth and use the goods of the earth for their own good and for the good of all creatures. So it's that abuse that's the problem. The earth, as we know, is one of God's great gifts to human beings to enable them to live and to progress. Due to the irresponsibility of humans, however, greedy and for power and for wealth, the earth, the Pope says, is among the most abandoned and the mistreated of our poor. You notice there again, he, he sort of personalizes the earth among the most abandoned and the most mal mistreated or maltreated of our poor. St. Paul says in his letter to the Romans that God, the fullness 
of the earth, or if you like, that the earth is groaning, groaning with human beings until the fullness of what it means for human beings to be children of God to be revealed. We're waiting on that moment for the fullness of what it means to be children of God. And meanwhile, as we wait, groaning as it were, so also the earth related to us groans. Pope Francis says, however, that we ourselves are made from the dust of that earth. We breathe her, breathe her air, we receive life and refreshment from her waters. And indeed, where would we be if we didn't have air and if we didn't have water? So it's bringing out what the earth provides for us. Then the Pope recalls the words of Blessed Paul VI in 1971, in which he referred to the ecological problem as <coughs> a tragic consequence of unchecked human activity, the exploitation of nature, which would lead not only to its destruction, but to the greatest harm to human beings who are so dependent on it. And Blessed Paul VI stressed the urgent need for a radical change in the conduct of humanity. Inasmuch, he says, as the most extraordinary scientific advances, the most amazing technical abilities, the most astonishing economic growth unless they are accompanied by authentic social and moral progress, will definitively turn against man. So that was back in 1970, he said those last words. By the way, you may have seen or heard in the last few days that a miracle has been approved for the canonization of uh, Blessed Paul VI. Uh, just waiting now on the approval of the Pope himself. All the preliminary approvals have been given by the medical people and by the theologians and by the cardinals. And once the Pope says yes, then a date can be fixed for his canonization. They're thinking it might be during the Synod on Youth later in the year as a possible time. Anyway, just to continue, technological, scientific and industrial progress has been, as we know, very, very rapid in the last century. But at the same time, humans have become more arrogant, more amoral or immoral. Amoral meaning having no morals at all, really, applying no moral principles to anything. Immoral, applying bad moral principles or evil principles, if you like, to things. But at the same time, they have become in this way, and they have become less caring <coughs> of the needy. I mean, we have seen that as time went on, the, the a huge increase in the, the greed for profits, really. The lack of uh, fairness and justice in the distribution of the food and so on that is available. The corruption that's present often among people in government and so on. As Franciscans, we need to continually ask ourselves, whether we go along with all of this or what are we doing to, uh, uh, to counteract it. Authentic human development has indeed a moral character. In other words, we must take into account what is right and what is wrong in the sight of God. There needs to be full respect for the human person, but there needs also to be the acceptance of the fact 
that all creatures, all creatures are connected in some way in a kind of an ordered system according to God's plan. Pope John Paul II, St. John Paul, spoke about that point. The book of nature, Pope Benedict XVI said, is one and indivisible. And he sees the damage done to both creation and our social environment as due to the same evil. What is it? The notion that there is no indisputable truths, no absolute truths, in other words, to guide our lives, and hence human freedom is without limit. It's the sin, I think, which was there right from the beginning. That sin was that human beings, creatures of God, wanted to decide for themselves what was right and what was wrong. They rejected what God had told them. And they forgot that God is the Lord of the universe and that we are his creatures. Genuine Franciscans then accept all creatures with gratitude and treat all with respect due to them. First of all, human beings, but also all the other creatures, animate or inanimate. We do what we can to protect the environment and to use God's gifts responsibly and fruitfully. And each of us can reflect on this for ourselves. Now, just before I finish, um, I took that <coughs> from uh, Pope Francis's encyclical because I was wondering if, even though uh, we do pick out little bits here and there, it might be a good idea to do it in a kind of an ordered way throughout the year. That's if, if you agree with it. If you don't, then if you think it's not a good idea, tell me. Uh, but if, if you think it's okay, then we can go through the encyclical, just picking out some of the main points and maybe trying to apply them in some way to our own lives. Uh, so you can let me know sometime what you think about that possibility. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.